Welcome back to Made by J&D. Thanks to all those of you that are returning, and hello to all the new viewers. Uh, for those that are returning, and you've watched this series of videos, you'll note that this is the only thing left of the motorhome, other than the front subframe, which is arguably the most important part, and the, and the bogies. Well, this is all that's left, and it's still giving me stuff. Cross members, fuel tanks. What a useless thing. All it does is drip all over the place. Better off breaking a can and pouring it on there. Well, these are not bolts. These are rivets holding them on here and here. But behind here are more nuts. Let's see if I can just get these off. What I have to do is rotate these little, push these little brackets out from the other side and those tanks should pretty much fall out, I think. It comes out this side. Still a pretty heavy thing. These tanks are nearly identical, except this tank, which was the rearmost tank, has this vent, and the other one didn't. It's just got a blank space there, nothing at all. Kind of interesting. Other than a few wires and uh, this filler pipe, well, there's an electric fuel pump. This thing is pretty much gone, so um, I'll bring you back when I have the, uh, this stuff pretty much cleaned off. And I'm just going to have this up on sawhorses, and I'm going to start taking off all the other cross members and the shock mount. Before I take these frame rails apart, it just occurred to me that I really need to find out why these shims were here. Now, this is the shims that came off this left side. They've got the right side ones over there. find out uh, do these bogies are they just do they made make them vertical are they towed out are they or uh, I'm not sure what the terminology is but do they uh, lean outward or do they lean inward it's not perfect it'll do that is leaning inward quite a bit. It's leaning. Okay, I haven't got this quite tight, but I think, based on what I'm seeing here, it looks like they're just making the bogies level. Let's try the other side. Same thing. It's leaning uh, inward a bit. Taking off the shock mounts, there's a kind of a forged bracket that held the bolt, and the, the bolt that held the shock was kind of pressed into that. It was a very tight fit anyway. And uh, getting that out was proved to be a bit of an effort. So anyway, this is the last bolt beyond here. Uh, this cross member and this one come out individually. Here, here, and there, those are all welded to this piece here. They're all loose. Should just come out of there. So what do you know? No drama. In the previous video, I discussed that I'm going to use, reuse the uh, cross member that's on the motorhome frame. That means getting rid of these remains. So I've got those to do on both sides, and I think I'm going to use the uh, plasma torch because it works pretty good. It'll still mean a lot of grinding, but less grinding than otherwise. 
I might change this tip because it's uh, not cutting. This. The air that comes out of this is going at an angle. Well, there's the old tip. You can still see through it, I think. And here's the new one. But I don't think that's the problem. I think this is the problem. I think that tip there is partially blocked. Well, just like everything else, there's not going to be too, anything too scientific here. I need these four holes and a little bit more. Let's mark the middle of that hole. It's roughly there. And I'll add an inch. And that'll be my mark. Cut there. For this piece here, I just need to uh, dress it up a bit. Cut it at a 45. That flange is, uh, I have to measure that flange over there. I think it's two and a quarter inches. Just measure out two and a quarter and then cut it at a 45. Sweet. I didn't need the bottom of this because this fits tight down on the bottom flange on the inside of the truck frame. And uh, what I've marked out here, a little bit of waste cut off and want to get rid of this hole. Cut that off, that, that, that'll be the shims on either side of the new cross member. These two are the brackets that hold the, uh, the front anchor for the torsion bar suspension and um, cleaned them up, sandblasted some of the parts and I'm just going to bolt them in place. These will be the shims that go to the uh, cross member that goes between the bogies. Well, it just so happens this one is where the torsion bar anchor used to mount. The uh, anchor has this kind of formed bit of metal and this slips in, this is a rubber bit that bolts, that uh, fits onto that, then that bolts to this. And yeah, that can be my, I figure out, you know, where to position this. Well, this is gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna poke this up into the, inside the frame and mark my holes. All I really need to do is, uh, I've gotta put this onto the anchor and bolt all this up. That'll give me my fore aft position to this hole. I'm just going to use this one. And then when I get how many inches that is to some arbitrary measuring point, that's the same on both sides, I can uh, mark these holes using this template on both sides. And uh, yeah, easy. Job done. I'm having trouble measuring up underneath the frame with this tape measure because it's, I don't know, I'm just having trouble with it. But what I can do is I can mark on the template and then measure to the template. That'll do, 30 and a half. Now that I've got the anchor for the torsion bars secured, that's set. I have to put in the cross member that goes between the bogies because it has the bolt pattern that I need to drill. Um, where does it go? Um, some opinions from family and friends, but the practical considerations, I may have a bumper here on the back or I may not. That's four to six inches. The bed will continue beyond the end of the frame by a couple, three, four inches. So let's say a total of eight. And the practical consideration is there's going to be a mud guard. There is a gap between the tire and the mud guard. The mud guard has a thickness. 
and then I want a gap behind it. Let's say two inches behind the tire, the mud guard will be four maybe, I don't know, and then I'll have 10 or 12 behind the mud guard to the back of the frame or the back of the bed. That's four inches. Okay, that's really still pretty close to the original 18 inches that I had measured, uh, uh, allowed for in the beginning. I might make a little bit further back because I really wasn't thinking about the end of the bed. And again, I'm going for appearance as much as anything. But um, so I am just going to pick a dimension here and say 16 inches. I'm going to go from here to the back of the tire, 16 inches. That should be enough. And knowing that, I can now put the cross member in about its regular place and measure where that is and drill the holes and secure the uh, bogies in place. There's really no front or back to this. But there is a top. And the reason being is there's two bolts at the bottom of the bogey that have to bolt into those two bolts down there. Now, can I squeeze this in there without too much trouble? No, I can't. Oh dear, well that's something I didn't count on. Now that I've got the frame connected in the back, I can't squeeze this thing in here. My goodness, oh, I've got to figure this one out. There are two ways to get that cross member in here. I could either take everything apart, take the frame rail off, and slide it in from the front. Or, this was always going to be, I was always intending to go from here and, and taper this out to about here somewhere. I didn't want to cut this off because I wanted to just bend it. But uh, now I guess I'm going to have to cut, a, cut this flange off and I'll re-weld it in back later. Uh, but uh, anyways, with that flange gone, I can then just push this thing up in there and it should work okay. I placed that bogey there at roughly 16 inches from here to the end of the frame, which is my target. And uh, I'm just going to line this up temporarily with where that's going to join up. It's about there. Very vague. Just allow me to get it in there. Ha! Life is good. Okay, that gap looks good. I'm looking at the gap there to the bracket. And then I want roughly 16 inches. Right. Now what I have to do, those lower two bolts there go to these two bolts down here. I'll put some in there for now just to hold it in place. All right, I had uh, measured these at roughly 16 inches, roughly, but that's not the real measurement. The real measurement's gonna be from a good measuring point on the cross member to the end of the frame, because I know these frame members are both exactly 11 feet, and the, right now the overall frame is square. So I want these both to be the same. This measures at 44 and a half. 44 and a half. Well, there you go. It's already square. Wonderful. I think I'll measure from the front as well. 80 and 7 eighths. That's 80 and 7 eighths. Well, okay. We're good.
Uh, when I had measured the, you know, between the frames, yes, that cross member fit marvelous. So I used that cross member that goes between the bogies, and I used the holes that were in it to mount the bogies. So I've got eight holes that I've drilled, and I forgot to take into account a little thing. The frame that it came off of was an eighth of an inch thick, roughly. That's all the way around, top, bottom flange, and the web. This frame I'm putting it onto is a quarter of an inch thick. And that meant that the frames, the holes that I drilled on these frame, is an eighth of an inch off. And what that caused to happen was the bogies would not bolt on. And um, I'm not proud of it, but I had to, I had to make drill bigger holes. It called for a half inch hole and I've got five eighths inch hole. I think that'll be fine because all the bolts that are on it are flanged. It'll still clamp in there good. Um, you know, holes are drilled in a lot of ways. They're made oval shaped to hold motors to slide or something. And that clamps fine. So I still think that'll work. That'll be fine. There's six bolts. They're not going to give up or slide or move around once I get them torqued in. I mean, these bolts are grade eight bolts and they're torqued to 90 foot pounds. It's, it's going to hold a lot. I'm just putting it on this axle flange here and you can see it's leaning inward. Now I move it out that much, that's level, it's about a quarter of an inch. So I'm basically just going to re re reuse the existing shims. I'll put them on the top two bolts of that bracket and that should get this all perpendicular and if I do that correctly to both sides, the bogies are bolted and that's, that's finished. Information's hard to find. And, and I don't have the re rebuild manual. Um, if you go online, you get a lot of opinion, not a lot of facts. So um, I'm just going to make my own reality. And I'm going to say that these wheels have to be perpendicular to the ground or at least square with the frame. And to do that, I need, I got the frame right now is level. I've got that leveled up. So that's got to come out that far. So here's the original shim packs. See how many there are. That's off the right side, this is off the left side. The problem is, they've seen better days. I don't have any other shim, it's shim stock. But I can replace some of them by using a piece of that frame. And I'll just make my own shims. I've already marked this out here. I've drilled half inch holes, just cut it out, and that'll be an eighth inch worth of shim stock. And if I need more, I'll make more. I made two of these shims. And I've got this one installed. You can just see the bright line there. And it was successful. That little bit is only an eighth of an inch, roughly. You should be able to see that that is now level. Yeah, it's not perfectly level. But that's the thickness of a paper, if that. Leaning outward slightly. Now, I haven't torqued up those bolts, and I'm thinking that might change it a little bit. Just wearing it in will probably change it a little bit. So I'd rather have it leaning out than leaning in. So that's good enough. We'll do the other side. And doing the other side, the shim that I made was, this is, uh, 115 thousandths thick. I found some material that was half that thickness. Anyways, that's part of the structure of this building. It's uh, one of the uh, um, C channels, or uh, what do they call them, girts? Well, as it turns out, that worked. So down there on the bracket, you can just see that bright line. That's the new shim that I made. Yeah. That's right on the money. So uh, got lucky. If anything, it's leading a bit outward at the top, and that's good. So um, I'm going to torque those up. And here's something else I found out. Okay, I've got this rear cross member. I've got the middle one between the bogies. Well, that one's just sitting there. And as it turns out, the bolts that are on the side of the frame here, those holes already exist. 
and there is already holes on the ends of, these, uh, of this uh, cross member. They line up, at least the top ones do. The bottom ones I have to redrill. So um, yeah, that's meant to be. I'm putting that in there. That cross member is not finished yet. I have to do two holes up underneath on each side to finish uh, bolting in the bogies. The front cross member is started, but I have to redrill a couple of holes as well. Um, I've got the bogies pretty well, you know, perpendicular now. That's good. I'm going to fix those up later when I get the, get, I'm going to get this chassis up on the lift so I can work up underneath better. Uh, in summary here, I don't think anyone likes to show their mistakes, but I've made a few here. Is it instructional? I don't know. But um, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.